Seven years ago, when I decided to open office in Gyumri, I selected Gyumri Technology Center as a place where we would like to do our business. And when I came, I met a person from US who already established his company in Gyumri. There was already eight people in that company uh, working with, um, with this entrepreneur. And uh, now I am guest as, at his office. Uh, and today we will talk with Todd Fabacher, who is founder of Digital Pomegranate. Hi, Todd. Mm, well, thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Welcome. And uh, to see that you are already like uh, so several times bigger than uh, <laughs> yes. in the beginning. And you are doing great uh, projects for the world, yes. not only for Kimri. But maybe everybody is asking you that question, but I would like to repeat it. Why Gyumri thought? <laughs> Why? Yeah, so my answer is really simple. It's always been the same. Why not? I mean, fundamentally, uh, when you look at something, you just need to look at opportunities, right? So the world is made up of opportunities and you have to create your own opportunities. And those opportunities really um, are created by you seeing sort of gaps in the market. And I really believe that um, given the, the, the changes in the technology, that there was a real opportunity here in, 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 in Gyumri to say, how can we um, create something and also make a difference? And I'm happy to say that when we first came here, there were maybe less than a handful of people that knew how to code or create things. And now it's the largest industry in the city. With, uh, from my understanding, there's over 800 people who work in the technology business just in, in the city of Cuba. And you see it transform itself everywhere. Like people that work for me, they've opened up hair salons, they opened up pubs, they opened up, the, the industry begins to trickle down and it makes a big difference. And as you walk the cities, it's not the same as it was 13 years ago. So not only do we make a tech transformation, we also help to transform the whole city. Todd, uh, um, um, at that time when you came, there was like really a few companies, even maybe you have been one of the first ones. Probably. Yeah, and there was even, Gyumri was not so active as it now, and uh, the tremendous the transformation have been during these years. And can you tell me what happened like from your perspective? What have been changed and what impacted all this change? Yeah, I mean, I think the only uh, company that had just started before us was uh, Instigate. They had just opened up an office also. And, you know, um, I think the same with them and their growth and our growth and everyone is a change in Armenia in the sense that they recognized that they had the potential to do it. Now, you, a lot of people say the root of that came from the Soviet Union and, and the science that was came from during the years of the Soviet years. But, uh, you know, I'm sure that had an influence, but I think the primary influence was uh, people saw opportunities, opportunities for, for themselves and their for a community. You know, it's really interesting. A lot of people, when I talk to people, they always ask me, you know, why Gyumri? You know, and, and it's, it's, it's for a lack of knowledge. It's not really condescending. I mean, they're not really, you know, like especially people in, in, in Yerevan. It's like, and I, and, and I say, have you ever been there? And they were like, no. And I'm like, it's less than two hours away. I mean, how could you not go see something like that or do it? And why would you not want to? So given the fact that I think people in Gyumri at that time didn't believe in themselves, much less being able to, to learn technology. So someone always says, you know, how did you teach technology? Well, the first thing I taught was for them to, to have confidence in themselves, that they could be a global company. Today, our big strength is not only are we a top tech company, but we are dealing with customers in Brazil, Australia, uh, Japan. You know, we write the apps that move the world in the music industry. We wrote an app that manages the parole system for the prisons in the government in Australia, in New South Wales. I mean, we write apps that the world actually uses to make the world function. And we do it all here in Gyumri. So by the way, you talked about the projects. Maybe you will share a few more about sure. your successes because um, uh, I heard about very big projects 
uh, which you mentioned last time during our meeting in New York. Uh, but is there any success stories after that or the big ones which you would like to share? Well, I think most people know that we're in the, in the music industry. I mean, we, we're unfortunately not able to give a total specifics of, of contracts per se, because we started, like many Armenian companies did, we started doing contracts for other people. The great news is that we're evolving just like Armenia needs to evolve. And as Armenia first began to do outsourcing or contract work, eventually those companies are now creating their own startups. The vast majority of people get in this business now, get in the business as their own startup, which is a wonderful transformation. You know, the real thing is, yes, you have branch offices of foreign companies, but that's usually, that in, in the Armenian tech industry, I think that's a very small percentage. The vast majority working for Armenian companies for that were started here and created here. And that means that the money stays here. And as you know, I'm involved in Gitush Initiative. Mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, pushes uh, all institutions to be more uh, involved in, uh, in developing the science, starting from government till the industry. And I would like to know your opinion, what must be done in this direction to uh, make this collaboration work better and to make Armenian tech companies to be more involved in product development and R&D stuff also to create more value for humanity. What's uh, your vision about that? That's a great question because I think it's really important not only for the society and individuals, but it's also important for the country. You know, take a lot of a small country, the countries that you think, you know, when, when most people talk about Armenia, they say, oh, well, we need to emulate Estonia. Oh, well, we need to emulate uh, Singapore. Oh, well, we need to emulate like Israel. But why do you say we have to emulate them or emulate like Taiwan? You, you're saying we need to emulate that because they're successful. And why are they successful? It's because they contribute to the world in general. They are an exporter of things. So they become important to the world. You know, you say to yourself, well, it's just basic science. Well, it's not basic science. When you create something and you add value to the world, you become important to the world. And I'm going to say something really, really direct, which, you know, so say it is negative or positive. When the war came down a couple of years ago, you know, some people had come to us and said, you know, oh, you know, some people, a lot of, uh, you know, Armenians come to you. Are you nervous about being in Armenia? Um, you know, I'm sure you're losing a lot of business for it. And this and that. And I said, I'm not. And they're like, well, how can you not? I said, well, I have a sad truth for you. We talked to one of our clients who was Sony, and we said, listen, do you have an issue that there's a war? You know what the answer was? What war? They didn't even heard about it. They didn't even know. And you ask yourself, okay, is that good or that's bad? It's bad because the most important thing is you have to make yourself relevant to the world. And having good scientific research, adding value to the world, makes it important, not only for you, not only for the industrial, but for the whole world in general, like you said. And part of that is important. You have to make yourself important. And you could say, well, how come the world doesn't you know, know us? Well, the question it has to go back to you. What have you done for the world? Part of it is you need to create that. You need to, to make the world a better place. Start with that is, is, is in today's world is science and technology and medical advancements. It will make a difference. You mentioned about the kids from Tumor, from Armad, and also you met a lot of uh, bright minds in tech, mm -hmm. but in my experience that there is a lack of business knowledge, marketing, uh, sales, and this uh, type of forces that we need to have to be successful in creating products and selling them. What do you think what must be done in this direction? What we can do, what type of collaborations we have, we can build to strengthen that direction? That is a very timely question because, you know, as, as we're saying, I've invested in, in, in some, you know, in some Armenian tech startups and, and, and in the general, even for my own company, you know, what as when you're doing contract work and many of the tech companies are now doing their contract, as they move out of that business, they realize that they have to have a product. And if you have to have a product, you have to have sort of sales. When you, when you, 
have large corporations or you start to have successful companies, you ask yourself the, the question, what department makes the most money in any company? Many tech companies will tell you it's the tech people. It's not. It's the salespeople. Why? Because your success depends on the salespeople, the sales and the marketing people. Because your expenses, your products, you can have the most wonderful product in the world. You can have the best technology in the world. But if you can't get it out to the market, if you can't reach and understand how to sell it in Brazil, how to sell it in Australia, there, there's, there's a very simple people, um, a path. Most people are like, well, I'm going to go to the United States and I'm going to figure it out. Right? Or I'll go do something in Europe. But yet, there's a massive market in China. And what's keeping them out of China or keeping them out of India or keeping them out of other markets like Africa is fear. It's fear if it's unknown. I mean, yes, okay, US is a great market to go to. We sell in the US. We do a lot. Our, our recent business, we really focused on the UK, uh, our, our antique and, and art software. That's because that was the biggest market in the world for that business. But you know the largest mobile market is China, and the second largest market, mobile market, is Africa. There are more app users in Africa than there are in the United States. And they embrace e-payment systems, online sales. Mobile usage is much, 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 much higher in Africa than it is in the United States. And they pay. Todd, uh, uh, having such huge experience working with different uh, economists and also having a uh, vision what is happening globally. What do you think what must be changed in ecosystem of Armenia, especially in Gyumri, mm -hmm. uh, to have a bigger impact on economy? What, what must be changed? I know some, there is some projects I heard about uh, this uh, big projects in Gyumri, probably you will know them better. Uh, what what is uh, how they can impact uh, our whole economy? So I, I think the biggest project that's going on right now is the is the dry dock dry yeah. port yeah. That, that that's coming from the government economics ministry, and I think it's a wonderful idea. And just just a brief introduction, real quick. So a dry port is the concept that it's where it, it's not connected to land, I mean to the sea. But what you're basically doing, it's inland and you produce goods and services and they're either uh, moved by, you know, um, truck, rail or um, primarily flight. Um, and that's really prominent in the United States, in inland in China, um, you know, even in Brazil. So what you end up doing is too expensive to actually get the goods to a port and then export it via ship. So they, they focus on products. Xi'an is a great city in uh, um uh, uh, in Western China that really focuses on production and it's all done through a dry port. It's basically flown out and they've created a massive airport system. So I think the dry port is, is a fabulous idea. Now for me, um, I think the real focus should be on uh, something that is great that merges all of the science and technology and the real strengths of Armenia, uh, which is merging the software, uh, and creating something like IoT devices. If you want to create a great ecosystem, how do you bring the pieces together? You know, Armenia is a, a very bullish or very positive Armenia because your tech industry has something that most don't. You have a wonderful entrepreneur system to back it. Now, you need extra skills, some extra tech skills, or you need some extra, you do need a lot of help in this, in the marketing uh, and PR, even more than marketing, it's really PR. It's a big one. How do you get the message out there for the products? And it's you have several PR industries that are really starting to come up, and you're seeing them pop up like a like a, uh, a flower garden in Yerevan. Pop up, you know, you you see them, and they'll come to you. They need to focus on the tech industry and how to help those companies get their message out. Now, for here, I think for Gumri specifically, the mix of the science. The, the, the software, someone needs to build a production system. You need to have manufacturing. The only thing you produce in Armenia, you, you, you know, and again, it's a positive and the negative. You create, your top producer right now is um, great technology, okay? But your two biggest exports are mining equipment and people. 
Now, if your top two exports are basically mining, which leaves a disaster, and your people because they leave, your third big money maker is technology. Well, if you want to st stop exporting the people and leave them here and let them create jobs, you have to create manufacturing jobs. You have to create production. Not everybody can be a, uh, a software producer. You can't have an entire city, a country of three million people and everyone just writes software. So you need that tech. We need to bring that science and we have to make it real for people. We have to create jobs of people that put stuff in boxes, that print the boxes, that wrap the boxes, that tests the devices, that print the PCB boards, that put the chips on the boards. This is why China is able to grow from most, one of the most impoverished countries in the world to, you know, a middle aged country in such a massive amount of time this is because they focused on manufacturing. And you could say, well, I can't do that in Armenia because we can't produce cars because we can't get them out of the country. So you create through this dry docking. Gurmi is the perfect city for that. You have the, the airport. People want to uh, focus on it. You have, uh, you have to now create industrial production and you have to take a focus like Taiwan Semiconductor. Taiwan Semiconductor manufactures the chips and around that are hundreds of IC chip design houses that they support. And then eventually now it's for around the world. But they originally did it to create an industry in Taiwan that produced hundreds of billions of dollars of value. Hundreds of billions of dollars. So you need to pick that industry, pick the government needs. And this is where the government, I mean, I think a lot of people in Armenia are over-reliant on the government, seeing that the government should, should, should find a solution to their problems. Um, but it's not the government's job. It's the your industry's job to go to the government and say, okay, here is something you can you can focus on. And it's great that you have great science, basic foundation of science. I mean, you need to focus on that. You can't just ignore it. But your job as an industry is to come together and say, finally, I have something that's great about science. And it has encompasses everything. Engineering, technology, software, hardware, production, manufacturing. That's what you need to do. And then get around it. And how can you embrace that? Todd, um, uh, what you will advise uh, to entrepreneurs who want, who are thinking about Armenia to invest here or not? What is your advice to them? My first advice is to come to Armenia and ask to have lunch with you. Because what they want to do is they need to meet successful people. They need to meet people that are top in their industry, that have created that value and have had really, really successful um, um, businesses. That number one, if you, there's two ways that they need to do. You need to do a step investment, which means how can I find someone that I want to invest in? First is a bit of money. They need to feel safe. You know, one of the things that if my advice to them is do it in baby steps. Right. It just so happens, you know, first that I did is I came, I took a look around, I started with a handful of people. Um, you know, I took a little bit of a different path and, and then we continue to grow. Um, but I'm in the tech business. I create value. I knew that as I created this company, I could produce that myself, even as I was training locally people. So we could still create value because I, I also did it myself. If you want to start doing it is come in and come into a company like early one or Lime Tech and invest in them or find companies like that where you can put a little money in, even if it's $20,000 or $50,000. Start to learn and the local people. Then the second thing is, is come. If you're looking at um, doing a larger investment, you know, then choose general investment houses. You know, someone like... Um, Smart SmartGate. Yeah, Formula uh, VC. Yeah, so, you, you know, there's ways to start to get these. This is how you can you can start to to find, a, you know, you'll get the biggest impact. Plus, it also lowers your risk. Then my next investment advice for them is to really to put some roots down here. You know, it's always a huge amount of fear. Fear is the mind killer, per se. And you have to, you know, once you've done those first three steps, then you need to make that third step, which is how do I produce here? What value can you add to the country and to yourself? And what can you do? So for example, everyone always thinks, oh, well, I have to be a tech investor to be here. But you said yourself, what is one of the weakest areas that, Arme that Armenia could really use some help is marketing and PR. I bet you right now there are a thousand really 
talented, experienced tech PR marketing people that are in California that wouldn't it be awesome if they just decided to take a three or four or five years and say, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. It doesn't have to be I'm a software programmer. The programming industry, the tech industry is really the tech business, the tech aspect of it is only like 30% of it. What about finance? Who's, help, who's here really helping to manage all these finances? Because these tech companies get big investors and then they get a big chunk of money. What are they going to do with that money while they're still slowly building their business? They're not getting solid financial advice. So if you're going to build an ecosystem, it's a whole array of people. And so if you're sitting and you're thinking about it, my first advice to you is think about it. Think about making that move. It doesn't have to be permanent, even if it's for five years. Todd, thanks for your time. It was my pleasure to meet you. Thank you.